We're over here with the past president of our world, uh, Chris uh, Kreisman, and I would like to ask him a few questions that were coming at us about the new NAR settlement. It's all over the news, all over the paper, all over social media. And I'd a lot like, of false info is all over the news and yeah, social media. Yeah, and I would like for people to decipher, because there's a lot of good that comes out of it, potentially. Absolutely. Okay. So if you can describe for us some of the benefits that you see coming for sellers and for buyers. So as far as sellers are concerned, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of talk about uh, commissions going down, the price of housing is going to come down because of this settlement. Um, I would avoid all talk of that. Okay. Um, there's no incentive for a seller to sell their house for any less than the neighbor next door when we're seeing right now that prices have gone up. New reports just came out that said uh, that the prices have gone up 4.1%. Mm -hmm. That new home sales in February have gone up over 9%. Um, that literally just came out this morning from uh, from NAR. So when we're talking about uh, sellers, first off, commissions have always been negotiable. Right. They always have, they always will be. This idea that anybody was setting prices uh, is completely false. I think that uh, the jury got it wrong in this case, uh, unfortunately. Right. Um, but moving forward, certainly uh, any seller that did not know that the commission was negotiable now knows no. that the commission is negotiable. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's the beginning benefit, uh, I would suppose, uh, for sellers. Uh, when it comes to buyers, Buyers now have the ability, which they always have because everything was negotiable, uh, but in, in uh, previous years you would have uh, sellers basically offering a commission to the buyer's agent. The buyer's agent opens up the door, shows the property, they're able to col collect whatever it was that the seller was offering. Uh, mm -hmm. The seller still has the ability to offer that commission. Uh, which the buyer agent now still has the right to collect. But as far as uh, buyers themselves, if they want a uh, buyer agent that is, uh, they just want them to open up the door and that's it, and they're gonna have their attorney do the rest, um, there's certainly the ability to negotiate what you're willing to pay your buyer's agent if you are gonna have to come out of pocket and pay that agent. Um, but, you know, to, everything is gonna be negotiable. You're gonna be able to go out there now and find a buyer's representative that is going to do as much or as little work as you want them to do. And negotiate the price for that. Negotiate the price for the services that you want and whatever value you think that that buyer's agent is going to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Something that you shared with me that I was not aware of is the buyer broker agreement, which in the past, you can go with one agent, go see 40 houses, then walk into an open house over the weekend and go do a contract with the agent of the open house and the agent who helped you throughout the last two, three months is empty handed. Thrown, thrown to the side. Yeah, we've seen that happen uh, time and time again. There's uh, been plenty of instances where somebody would go, a realtor would go and uh, work 40 hours for a buyer, finding them the perfect property, go in, show them the house, not even that the buyer goes to an open house, but we've had people that have not been very honest with the agents that they were working with. So mm. they'll go and use 40 hours of that agent's time. They go and find them the exact right property for the, you know, to, to exactly what's going to suit their needs. And then they end up buying the property from their sister who's licensed in a different part of the state and had never told that information to uh, their agent. It's very unfortunate, but it's happened for years. Uh, one of the things that is going to come out of this lawsuit now is that if the settlement were to be approved, starting in mid-summer, everyone is now going to have to sign a buyer-broker agreement with whatever realtor that they choose to work with. The, the agent is agreeing that they are going to perform all of the services that they have uh, told the buyer during their consultation. And now you're gonna sign a buyer representation agreement or buyer broker agreement, buyer agency agreement, depending on where you are in the country. Um, but when you sign that buyer broker agreement like you're going to do here in Florida, the times of, I'm gonna work 40 hours for you and then you're gonna go buy from your sister, that's all gone. Uh, there's gonna be a level playing field for all realtors um, that are transacting business in the United States. So that agreement is going to lay out all of the terms, what you are going to get paid for your services, the geographical area that you're going to work in. And if you happen to have a buyer that says, you know what, I don't know if this, um, if, if this relationship, uh, we wanna have this strong of a relationship right out of the gate, you could have a buyer 
uh, buyer broker agreement that is signed for each individual property or a city really? or a street or a county or whatever the case may be. So that way you could test the waters with your buyer broker and see if that's something that's going to work out for you. But with the settlement, you as a realtor cannot open the door unless you have that buyer brokerage agreement signed. And if you do, you're in we're going to see we're, yeah we're 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 going to see what the consequences <laughs> will be but yes you will be in breach of the negotiated settlement so can somebody that has an agent but was driving around so an open house is it okay for them to walk into this open house and says look i have a representation i have an agent that i signed a buy a broker agreement with yeah. but i saw the open house can i come in of course they can. And if you are a realtor that is doing your job properly, you should make sure that your customer has a stack of cards. So that way, if yeah. they do feel like going out on a Saturday morning uh, and visiting some open houses, they now have the ability to say, I'm under a broker, uh, buyer broker representation agreement with Chris, with whoever it is, and hand them a, a card. So that way, the agent that is working the open house knows that you are under representation and they know that they're not going to be writing an offer for you they don't have mm -hmm. to be wasting a lot of time they can answer the questions that you may have but they know that you have some representation uh, elsewhere and it, it specifically states in the buyer broker agreement that if you were to go to an open house that you as the con as the consumer that you agree to tell that agent at the open house that you are represented because if you decide that you want to purchase that property at the open house, um, you are under obligation. obligation to pay the realtor that's been doing all the work for you. Excellent. What do you think it's going to do to the level of professionalism in this? I think that the bar is about to be raised big time. I mean, we have uh, in the state of Florida, it takes one week to get a real estate license. Mm -hmm. Obviously you pass the exam, so you do know the laws of the state of Florida. Uh, but in Florida, it's up to your broker to teach you everything that happens afterwards. Um, so we do have uh, a, a relatively low barrier to entry in the state of Florida. I think that uh, those agents that are able to really articulate their value to the consumer, the agents that have done their homework, they know exactly what it takes in order to get you to the closing table. Uh, this is the biggest purchase that most people will ever make right. in their life. Right. Uh, you want to make sure that you're interviewing agents, finding the people who um, who know exactly what it is that they're doing, because now you're hiring that person to work for you. Would you go to uh, the attorney that you found on uh, a bus bench, um, right. you know, on the street, and just, <laughs> hey, I'm just going to trust this guy with whatever legal matter that I'm going through? No. So why do you do that with somebody who's taking care of the biggest financial investment that you're probably ever going to make? So yes. it's it's. The, uh, the the level of professionalism, I think, in this industry, uh, gonna you're, be, you're, you're going to see it's it gonna really go skyrocket. Up. Absolutely. And people who are not going to be willing to go and step up to that level. They're going to be left behind. Yeah. Unfortunately. And uh, that's not said to discourage anybody from getting into this business. To, to be a, a realtor is, is I, I think, uh, one of the greatest professions that there is. I mean, the, the people that we meet every day, the, uh, the lives that we get to change, the smiles that you see on people's yeah. faces, um, the ability to earn a, to unlimited income. I mean, it, it's right. it really this business is uh, you can make as much money as you're willing to work for and as hard as you're willing to work. Yeah. Um, so you're going to see uh, you're going to see definitely a, a higher level of professionalism. Um, and I think that anybody who's still looking to get into the business, Absolutely. Get into the business, but make sure that you're having real conversations with your colleagues, with your broker. Make sure that you're properly trained. Right. Make sure that you know all the steps. Uh, make sure that you, you collect a wonderful team, a great mortgage broker, a great inspector, a great insurer, a great title company, people that are going to help you get across that uh, that finish line. Finish line, Yeah, Absolutely. so just as long as, I mean, you, you could still set up a fantastic business as long as you're you're ethical, you're knowledgeable, uh, make sure that you really have all your ducks in a row and, and you could soar in this business. Yeah. Being that the seller agent, the buyer agent commission was usually paid by the seller and now it's more negotiable, it's more in the open, if the seller is not willing to pay those commission to the buyer agent and the buyer agent now need to look to the buyer and say, okay, you pay me the 3% or whatever right. that number is, how do you think that will affect eligibility of buyers? Because right now, coming from a lender, 
where I pre-approve people and I look to qualify them, not many people sitting with a lot of stashed cash extra to buy a home. So that on top of what they have to pay, down payment, closing costs, prepaids, how do you think that will affect their ability to buy? That's one of the uh, that's one of the unfortunate circumstances I think that are going to come out of the settlement. I think that um, we see on a day to day basis. You see more than I see on a day to day basis uh, when you have somebody who's trying to qualify for a loan that these debt to income ratios can be quite slim, and you have people that are a tiny credit card payment away from not being able to afford right. their dream home or their first home. Um, now that uh, they may find their dream home. And the seller says, I am not offering compensation to the buyer's agent, nor am I willing to negotiate paying the buyer's agent compensation. Not only is the seller doing themselves a disservice by substantially shrinking the pool right. of buyers that they have, uh, but that buyer could have been the one that was willing to pay full price for the home and uh, you know to work with whatever the seller's closing date needs were or lease back needs or whatever the case may be uh, that could have been the right buyer and if the seller is not willing to negotiate on those terms uh, to give that buyer a little bit of help because we see how unaffordable homes are yeah. we see how stretched people some uh, we see how stretched some people are in trying to get into those homes um, i think that the seller is really doing themselves a, a disservice by by not being willing to negotiate or by not offering compensation, period. I think that maybe in the beginning when until the dust settles, uh, people are going to try to play hardball and say, oh, I'm not paying, but this is the ramification of you not paying and then coming to terms to say, look, it's always been negotiable. It was never been brought out there. Right. But now that it's out there, let's make sense out of this whole uh, commissions which i'm glad you're doing right now trying to make sense out of all this so that people can actually understand what's going on yeah and stop about all this this one said this this one said that get the facts get the truth get what people need to actually know so they can move forward absolutely otherwise it's like she said he said i heard i read and it's like and it's it a whole commotion yeah and it doesn't help that the media is putting things out there before they actually understand how this business what works. Yeah, yeah they're, they're taking little pieces of things, sound bites, because that's what's going to get them clicks. Yeah. And that's when it, you know what's going to get people watching what it is that they put out. But at the same time, the information that they're putting out there is just false. And people are, are getting very, very much like, how would I say, discouraged. Yeah. Because they really don't know who to listen to, what to do, how to go about doing it and they trust the media so they're trusting a false narrative right now when it comes to this topic they're trusting a false narrative because right. i've we've we've all heard it in the last uh, in the last week so many things that were going around and uh, it, it it's really baffling um the real estate community is still trying to hash out exactly what this means so the fact that the media is out there being an expert on something that the experts aren't an expert <laughs> on yet is a real problem that by the way, when is it all supposed to take place? So if this settlement were to be approved, uh, we expect that the changes are going to take place midsummer, mid-July to be exact. Okay. Um, there is a, uh, a legal formula on when this um, settlement is filed, which is supposed to happen this week. Then there is a period of weeks that go by, and that's when it's basically finalized, stamped for approval, and, and we're done. Um, but we're, we're expecting mid-July is when changes are going to take place. So we have the MLSs across the country, the real estate associations across the country are all now uh, sort of building what the new normal is going to look like. So that way everything is in place for mid-July. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're going to be training on all of those. There's going to be plenty of training. Make sure that you get yeah. with your local real estate association. Definitely. So up until July, things are as usual? Business as usual. Uh, we are here. And even after July... In my opinion, and just so everybody who's watching knows, I, I'm, I'm not speaking as a past president of the association. I'm here speaking to you just as a local real estate broker. Um, in my opinion, I think that we're going to find out that this really is going to stay business as usual, done in a slightly different way with a little bit more paperwork. We're now going to have buyer brokerage agreements, which I love. I've been mm -hmm. pushing my agents to use them uh, for a very long time. So now that it's going to be mandatory, there's not going to be... Um, 
a weight for people to adopt anymore. It's yeah. a, now you're going to have to adopt you it. You have so to get do with the program. it. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, having people under buyer agency agreements or buyer, bro buyer broker agreements, um, we don't want to talk about agency because Florida is a transaction uh, broker state, mm -hmm. but having that buyer brokerage agreement signed, uh, the agents now guaranteed that they're going to receive a paycheck after they do all their work. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the sellers, so one of the big things that happened is as a realtor, your seller can still offer compensation to a buyer uh, broker. Can you put it on the contract? It can go on the contract. You, you can negotiate uh, your commission in the contract with a simple clause that will go into special terms, saying that the seller is going to give the buyer agent X amount of money towards closing costs or to pay their buyer brokerage agreement, um, uh, buyer broker fee. Uh, but when it comes to the MLS, the settlement says that the compensation can no longer be placed directly into the MLS as compensation being offered to a buyer broker. But seller concessions are allowed to be placed in the MLS. So could a seller offer a seller concession to the buyer, and that could be used towards the buyer's closing costs, could be used towards paying their broker fee, which is now going to be a cost that the buyer is going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. Before, we've had the sellers that were paying both sides of the commission. That's what showed up on the closing statement. Now it's going to say that the buyer's paying this portion and the seller's paying this portion. Well, how is the buyer going to pay that? The buyer could pay that through a seller concession. Mm -hmm. I, I would. I'm, I'm sure that Fannie and Freddie will have to address it because right now they are only allowing uh, seller concession towards closing costs and prepaids. They will have to make some changes to allow that. They will. And VA is going to be a big problem as well. Because as we know, VA yeah. can only be changed by a legislation change. Yeah. You know how long that takes. So, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what uh, what we're going to have to do to to get around the VA buyer. Yeah. So it means that we need to use the professionals. The professionals have to step up. Absolutely. And know all those little nuances of what you can and cannot do, how to do it. And like I say to people, people think that the realtor or lender just oh they collect this big check. There's so many things that need to take place. There's so many hands that touch a transaction. Right. I tell people it's like 40 different sets of hands that has to be involved. Right. And the amount of steps that uh, we go through as real estate professionals to get somebody to the closing table, we're talking about hundreds of, di hundreds of different yeah. tasks that we do in order to get somebody from point A to point B yeah. uh, and make sure that they get to the finish line. So to, to say that uh, everybody in this business is overpaid, it, what time do you go to sleep at night? <laughs> so our phones just ring all night long. Right? Yeah, and yeah. So I would, in um, closing, I would say definitely buyers, check with your buyer agents, check with the brokers, check with your lenders, and use professionals. Absolutely. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a pickle. It's the biggest investment that most of us will make in our lifetime. Yeah. Make sure that you're working with the proper professional that knows what they're doing and how to get you to the closing table. Yeah. Thank you guys for more. Tune in and tune in to some right information, not just what they have in the news.